Hi everyone, I'm Barbara Henderson and I am a Time Tunneler. So we are posting this video on National Technology Day and I thought I would tell you about a very remarkable man that I learned about uh, while I was writing Rivet Boy, uh, the book behind me here. The man's name is William Arrow, Sir William Arrow in the end of it. He was born in 1839 and he was probably the Victorian age's most famous and successful engineer. And for some reason, not that many people know about him now. And I think it's high time I put this right. I went to visit an exhibition in a, a museum called Roselle House in Ayr. Ayr was where William Arrow lived uh, in a place called Seafield House. And uh, he was famous for trying new things. For example, he absolutely pioneered the use of steel in bridges. And the fourth bridge was the, the longest cantilever bridge in the world at the time. William Arrow was somebody who would push boundaries. He then went on to build Tay Bridge, the replacement after the Tay Bridge disaster, and Tower Bridge in London as well. And he built lots of cranes and workshops in which some of the most famous ships of all time were made, including the one that built the Titanic in Belfast. He was quite a guy. Now, he really uh, enjoyed inventing new things and new technologies to make things easier. For example, he invented a hydraulic riveting machine which made it easier to join pieces of metal together really securely and um, he also pioneered the use of huge giant cranes the way that we still see them nowadays and uh, he built bridges all around the world including one in uh, in cairo in egypt across the river nile how impressive is that so in the Victorian age, you would think that somebody like that would be incredibly well trained, but he didn't even go to secondary school. He had to leave school as a boy and become a worker uh, in a cotton mill before he was even 10 years old. And then he uh, secured an apprenticeship in a blacksmith's when he was 14 and uh, then set up his own metalwork company. You will still see on display some uh, of the metalwork that was actually found in his house, beautifully decorated with his own initials as well. And um, he was a man who, who was probably a workaholic, but he also really appreciated the beautiful things uh, in life and he enjoyed surrounding himself with those. So he was a humble guy, a son of a weaver. And the thing that really struck me was when I went to see uh, the exhibition about him that there was a photograph there and it was of him alongside the uh, Bridges designer, one of the two designers uh, called um, Sir John Fowler and his wife. And the Fowlers are at ease in this photograph. They are chilling. You know, they've probably had their photograph taken umpteen times and they're very well to do and well turned out. William Arrell standing beside them. The jacket looks like it's got lots of creases in it and his hands are the size of shovels. They are so huge. And he just looks at the camera as if he's just not sure about being there at all. A bit of imposter feeling maybe. And um, I really love that about him. He looks like he doesn't, he doesn't feel entitled to be there. So for your writing challenge, um, let's do a William Arrell. Let's think of a problem around you that you could solve and then let's draw a machine that you would invent uh, in order to solve this problem and please write a little instruction manual with maybe up to five or ten bullet points of how to use the thing to solve that problem and um, on this technology day i think that seems a very apt challenge happy time tunneling and all the best to you